morning guys, welcome to Papa's Place. If this is your first time here, thanks for dropping in. Feel free to drop in anytime you feel, my friend. Guys, today we're finna show y'all how to change the clutch and put a new chain on the go-kart. So just get you a drink and hang on. Well, good morning, guys. Guys, today we are working on us a go-kart. Now, a few days ago, I put the word out I was looking for a go-kart frame because I had a couple of motors that I'd acquired. One of them was this Predator engine that was off of a tiller I had that was my paw-in-laws. I put the tiller on there, and I think I used it about one year, which really didn't use it that often. But it was one of them rear tying tillers and the gears locked up or stripped out or something or other where the tiller was so old I couldn't even get it apart to even look at trying to fix it. So I've had this Predator 212cc motor and I've just been keeping it cranked ever so often. And I said I need a go-kart frame. Hope just going to outgrow them little battery operated rides one of these days and he's going to need something to ride. Right now, he ain't big enough to ride this, but Papa can get in this. I'll get you over here and show you in a minute. It's a little two-seater. A Thunder Cart. XL700. Made down here in Louisiana. Brister's Thunder Carts. Roseland, Louisiana is where this thing's made. But when I went to pick it up, the motor that was on there, I'm going to spin y'all around here and show you. This was the motor that was on that cart. And it says on the tag around here, this is a 196cc. Well, I ain't even gonna try to pronounce that name, but it's Y-A-M-A-K-196cc. Well, of course, first thing I done was pull the carburetor off and give it a little sh sh shot of starting fluid and when I pulled it it fired off I'm like well this motor may not be nothing wrong with this motor that was on this old cart just carburetor well I took the carburetor off which I just got it stuck back on here until I get my new carburetor in and I took it apart but it was so crowded up when I tried to get the needle out of it I ain't gonna take that off when I tried to get the needle out of it it just broke off in there so I ordered a new carburetor for this motor. But I got to look in this motor and that Predator motor. Like I said, this is the Predator, come from Harbor Freight, 212 cc. But guys, this looks like the identical motor. The carburetor was identical when I took, when I got all this off where you can see that it's got the exact same carburetor on it. The only thing's different is the air intake and the tank and the muffler shaped a little different. So I put this motor on here and I had a cable. I actually ordered me a new cable, but then I thought I had a, so I got a cable out there on an old tiller. Actually, another motor in here came off of. So I got three motors. <laughs> And this, this Predator and that Brig and Stratton's off of that tiller, ain't nothing wrong with them. But I had this cable, so I fixed that cable, so I ain't going to need my new cable. But I'll give y'all a little look-see at the cart. I ain't a bad-looking cart. Even though it was sitting out in the weather and the rain and all, the seat ain't tore or nothing on it. I even got it hooked up on this Predator. The on and off switch works. But what I had to do, and that's what we're going to do today, is I had to order another go-kart clutch. Called the one that was on the go-kart on this other motor over here that I ain't going to try to pronounce. It was totally rusted and froze up. But that's a three-quarter inch shell with a tin tooth sprocket on it. So we're going to be putting that on our Predator. Then I have a new chain called a chain that was on it. It was so rusted up, I even soaked it in oil, and you can't get it. But this chain here is so long, I'm going to have to take out the master link and get this chain the right length. So let's get over here and look at putting a clutch on a go-kart. 
Now guys, since I'm right here close talking to y'all and I know you can hear me, I had to turn the AC back on in this shed. But when I ordered my new clutch and chain, this Predator had a pulley on it and run a belt. It didn't have the bolt in the end. Well, I found a fine thread bolt that fits right in there. But we're going to have to go out there and cut this bolt off. And I'm going to show you how to cut a bolt off. If you ever need to cut one off, always get you a nut to put on there. We're going to cut it off with a Dremel tool and then take a wrench and back that nut off so it'll clean the threads out. If you ever cut your bolt off and you don't put a nut on there to clean them threads out, you about can't get the threads to where that screw on there. But we're gonna go out there and cut that off in a moment. Now when you get these clutches here, they got a keyway in them. You can see on your shaft here where the key slot is. And some motors have to have spacers on here. Now I didn't order no spacers neither, but I figured I could create something if I needed a spacer. And I'm going to need a spacer. So, I'm going to eyeball this small sprocket with the big sprocket back there. And I'm going to get me a measurement back here of the spacer I need. And I'm going to make a spacer because I know I done thought about this. I still have the inside part of that old clutch right here. And I'm thinking that I can put this in the vise and take my grinder with that little mini blade on it and cut that off and have me a spacer. Well, that slides right up on there tight, which it needs clean with some emery cloth. See, it has a key in it also. And I'm thinking I can cut that right there and make me a spacer to put on there. And there's the key. You got it lined up right there. So yeah, I'm thinking I can cut that with that key in it have me a spacer and I believe that'll work if all you want is something that won't let this move in toward the engine so right now let's go out here and show y'all how you cut a boat also guys I know y'all hear that air conditioner on the outside now while I was getting phone calls about go-karts a lady messaged me on that Facebook. She said, I got a go-kart behind my house you can have. Well, look what it is. This is a 150XRX Trailmaster. It's more like a doom buggy. But my little motors ain't gonna work on here, so this is gonna be a project for another time, maybe in the winter time, to see if I can get that motor running or Something major be wrong with that motor, but you can't put no little six horse, six and a half horse on this baby. But Papa and Coach is gonna have fun if we can get that right there running. So all you gotta do is put this in a vise, and like I said, I done run this boat in there to see the length I need. But always, always, always make sure you got a nut put on there before you cut it off. I'm gonna take this Dremel tool so y'all put your safety glasses on. Don't get none in your eyes. Now guys, I, now guys, I can't believe I got that cut while breaking that little disc. Usually I break two or three of them little discs when I'm trying to do something like that. Then you can take your wrench and put on that nut and that boat's hot, so be careful. I ain't even gonna need a wrench. Now that nut cut pretty dead gun smooth. I unscrewed that with my finger, but a lot of times you can't unscrew them with your finger. You gotta put a wrench on there to back out them threads be smashed on the end. That little Dremel tool blade is so thin, even on that fine thread bolt, that nut's gonna work. So that's how you get around having to buy a new boat. Now we got our boat, and I know I got a washer over there. I won't be needing that nut right there. 
You need a big washer. Make sure it's going to start. There it goes. Yeah, I get me a big washer and I snug that down on there. That'll be just right. Now that other motor over there, that Yamakanzu or however you pronounce it, it's got a boat that goes right here with an alamite on it and then the shaft there's got a hole where you can pump grease in there so when you get ready to take your clutch off one day it comes off. And you put this one on there and it sat out there for several years like that other one did. You probably wouldn't ever be able to get this one off. This predator ain't made with no hole there where you can shoot grease in. So now, I'm gonna put my clutch on. Like I said, I'm gonna line this sparkles up just with my eyeball right there. See if I can get me a little measuring tape or some type and get me a measurement for a spacer. And I ain't gonna show y'all this, but I'm gonna go out there in the vise and get my grinder. And once I get my spacer cut out and one that'll work, I'll show you. But like I said, you can buy spacers for this. But I didn't think about it when I ordered it and didn't buy no spacer. Alright guys. So from one eye lining this up and looking at it and measuring this you need a half inch spacer on this predator with this clutch now i'm sure different clutches is different because i looked at the old one off that other motor it didn't have a spacer but it was made differently on the back right here but i'll leave this in the description below this video this is off amazon it and the chain come together I don't know how good it's going to be. It looks like it's made pretty good. It's heavy quality. Looks like it's just as good a heavy built as the one that was on that other motor. But I got my half inch spacer. All I done was stuck that in the vise and took my four inch grinder and grinded that off. And I'm saying a half inch. But see this little deal. It ain't really got a key in it, but it's got an indention in it. And that'll keep the spacer from spinning when it's on that shaft. And what it's setting that back there against, all of that turns that it's touching, so it ain't something that it can, the shaft turning itself, what I'm saying. So it ain't like it's touching the motor when the motor's running, it's gonna eat into your motor. That's where you gotta watch out with your spacers, make sure it ain't nothing that's gonna be touching the motor the side of the motor. So now let me get it lined back up. I had it lined up, slid up on there and then pulled it off. There it goes. Line this key right here up. And I'm That looks like that sprocket is lined up with that sprocket. Now I'm gonna shove my engine all the way to the back because this is a new chain and I'm gonna have to take a link out of it and get it put on here. But you want your engine all the way to the back. That way if your chain starts stretching as it gets used, you got more adjustment to loosen under your motor down here and slide your motor up. That's how you tighten your chain. So right now I gotta get the new chain, take the master link out of it, and then we get over here and figure out what length chain we need. All right, guys, this this chain is almost it ain't it ain't long enough to make two chains, but it's way too long for one chain. Now I counted the lengths in the old chain, and by the way, if I ain't mentioned it, this is a 420 chain. By me counting it, which their motor may have been slid more forward. I got this and slid back as far as it'll go. Looked like counting the lengths in the old chain that was on here versus this one. But that wasn't this motor neither, so I, I don't I think that's the same exact motor myself, but Looks like my chain's gonna be one length shorter than the chain that was on it, but I do have my motor shoved all the way back. 
Now I'll see why I counted 69. Because it's going to end in the wrong spot. So yeah, it's going to be... It's going to be 69 just like on the old chain. I'm going to have to push my motor a little farther. And when you take a link out of the chain, you got to make sure you take it out on the right link right here. Alright. So I'm going to go out there. Take my little grinder and grind the end of that. Dial, I call that a dial. I don't really know what you call it. I'm going blank right now, guys. Grind in that off, take my punch and punch it out, and then we can put the chain together with the master clamp. I'm gonna double check it one more time, make sure. Chain had a master link in it, and they sent an extra master link. But I don't want to mess up here. There's my flanks. Alright, be back in a moment. Alright guys, got my chain link took out. Like I said, this, this chain had a master link in it, plus it come with an extra one in the pack. There's the master link for the chain. Now guys, back in the day, I done that with a file on my bicycles. I'd file out, knock that out. Didn't have a little hand grinder I could do it with. Also, I put these back together. The length in the chain just like such. Well, these pins ain't long enough you can drive them back in, but after you file them off, they ain't gonna stay. But nowadays, with that little wire welder, you can, you ain't got a master link. You can put that chain back together, drive that pin back in there, and put a little spot weld right on the end of there. As long as you didn't get it too hot and weaken that eye. Now, it is gonna weaken it. I'm just saying if you ain't got no other choice. I remember one time when I was a kid on a bicycle, I lost my master link and I stuck two nails through there and bent it. Yeah, that lasted long enough to get me about a half mile away from the house. And then it, then it, uh, nail shot out or broke or whatever. <laughs> but there's more than one way to skin a cat. Alright, there's our master link. Ooh, I wished I could have took another link out of that chain, but it it wouldn't let me take a left full link out. That ain't gonna give me. Oh well, that's gonna have to be what it is, cause if I took another link out, it wasn't gonna let me have enough slack to get it in there. So we're gonna get this good and squared up by eye the motor. Whoa. like square to me and I'm gonna tighten these four bolts down on the bottom of this motor here and we finna fire her up and see see what she looks like before we put the tire back on now you want to get back here and get in line You want to look at that and get that all in line the best you can before you tighten the motor down because if it's got any kind of little crookedness to it it'll wear your chain and sprock it out move y'all back around there so i can get a good look all right guys i thought i never was gonna find another fine thread boat but I found one. If I can just get it started now.
There we go. Now we got her. Now we got her. Alright. Now we're finna fire up and see if this all works. Let's see. Switch on up here. Give it a little choke. Alright guys, we finna give her a test run. We finna go down the driveway and back. Gonna have to get out there on the little black top and see how fast this thing will run. But I can tell you, but I can guarantee you right now, coaching ain't about old enough to turn loose on this. But we finna get out there and go take her for a spin down the road. But I hope y'all enjoyed the little video. That's how you can put your new clutch and chain on you a go-kart you can get you a motor off of a tiller or anything a lot of them will mount right on there and hook right up as y'all can see you can come across go-kart frames that people don't want their kids as grown sometimes they give them to you sometimes you give them just fifty dollars hundred dollars you got you a good little toy but as always hope y'all have a great day and a blessed week god bless See y'all next time.